today's video I'm going to be showing you guys basically car hauling, uh, how to get in it, where to get your loads at, why you shouldn't just do one or two cars, which I've always preached don't really be a two car hauler. You, need, you definitely need three to be able to make decent money out here. BMS is beeping at me. Every single tire is low. It's down in the 60s, so I do have to put some air in each one of the tires. Besides that, it's going pretty good today. So we're going to get the trailer hooked up. We're going to be mo moving a local run today from Shermansdale, PA out to Mechanicsburg and then we're coming back home but yeah I want to go over all the nitty-gritty and kind of like give you guys like my perspective of the car hauling all right so you want to be a car hauler ask yourself why why you want to make less money than the guys that run great do you want to be home more do you want to work harder cheaper rates it's not all that it's cracked up to be in my case I do it because I can be home every week you guys saw in previous videos I run Pennsylvania New Jersey 95 down to Florida 95 back up to Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then I'm home. I can be home every six days as opposed to the guys that are out running. Now, you have to run at least three cars to make a decent living, and that's at a bare minimum. I mean, you're going down to Florida, and you're trying to run cars, you're gonna have to understand that the rates kinda suck down there. It's just the nature of it. Getting in's really, really good. Getting out, not so much. Now, if you're getting into this, you know, for the money, it's one of those things I tell you, hey, this might not be for you, because, at the same time, you really gotta enjoy what you do and you really have to be doing this because you wanna be out here, you need to take it seriously. Just what I've done, I went from just running this pile, you know, it looked like hell back in February, March when I started, now look at it, right? We're making upgrades, we're moving on. So if you wanna be a car hauler and you decide you wanna run one or two cars, you're gonna have to understand that you're gonna have to be out a lot longer to be able to make the same amount of money. Especially if you're coming from Florida and you're only trying to run two cars. I got two cars back up to Virginia the other day and that only made me $1,100. Florida to Virginia, it's terrible. But, you know, you get a bigger trailer. I got three grand down, three cars, thousand bucks a piece. And I can consistently do this. I will consistently get $1,000 per car down to Florida. I'll consistently get three grand down in. But coming back out, you really have to figure it out. So that's one of the drawbacks. Now, if you look at it, you're like, okay, you know, that's that's a drawback. You know, it's not a big deal. And you're ready to get into this. Let's go over some of the stuff you need. Let's go over how to do it. And we'll go from there. I wanna point people in a direction here too. I did a video a while back for everything you need to lease on to a company. I strongly advise you go watch that video and get some background knowledge. Now, my setup, we got a 43 foot Kaufman three car trailer with the uh, the slide outs and shit, you know. If I can back up without hitting the damn thing. So, three cars. I can move three cars. The only downside is you're non-CDL. I advise every one of you watching this video who are saying, oh, I'm gonna run non-CDL. Don't do it. You can run non-CDL in the beginning, but 100%, go out and get your CDL. Do it. There is no, absolutely no good reason that you can give me not to. I was that guy. I gave those excuses. I said, hey, I'm not gonna get my CDL. I'm not going to, I don't want to. I'm not gonna do it. You know why I'm not gonna do it? Because I'm lazy. That's why I'm not gonna do it. That's the reason why people tell you, oh, I don't wanna get my CDL. You can absolutely go out and get your CDL. Right now, this setup, 9,000 pounds, 21,000 pounds. Oh wait, had to derate it. You guys can see right here, had to derate, 17,000 pounds. That's 4,000 pounds of capacity lost. Cars are shit. They're cheap. You're gonna need to be able to take more than just three cars. You're gonna need to be able to throw a truck on there. You're gonna need to be able to take one truck and two cars. Two cars will pay you really good and then one truck will give you that added bonus. In my case, that would put me at 30,000 pounds. Can't do that, why? Because of this dumb number right here, 26,000, okay? Now, another bad reason to get into car hauling, okay? You're non-CDL. Your buddy told you, you don't need to run a logbook. You don't have a CDL. You're under 26,001 pounds. You don't need to run a logbook. Your buddy's full of shit. I'm tell you this right now. The only reason I can run paper logs is because my engine's a 96. But if you have a truck newer than 2,000, you're gonna be running this guy right here. Keep trucking. You have the exact same rules and regulations as a semi. Doesn't matter. You're over 10,000 pounds. That's what they look at. You're over 10,000 pounds. You gotta do that. You need insurance for cars, okay? I didn't sign these. I can just go in and sign. By the way, 
I am off duty for this because this is not a for-profit thing. This is strictly just a day. This is a personal day. You can do this. I'm not making any money today. I'm gonna put that out there. But you have to run a logbook. You have to have insurance. How much money is insurance, right? If you're just running campers and RVs and shit, generally, you know, you might pay 700 bucks a month for insurance to move RVs and campers. And the thing is, someone's gonna be like, oh my God, $700, that's a lot. No, that's actually pretty cheap. You start hauling freight, an average guy might get a $2,000 quote. If you go through Progressive, you might get a $2,000 to $2,500 quote for insurance per month. Now you're thinking, oh shit, that's a big jump. You're right, it is. Now add cars, you're gonna get an even bigger jump because now you're gonna have to put hazmat in there and everything. So, like I said, you want to get in cars? I'm gonna go over it all. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to strap cars down, how to put cars on a trailer today, all that. I'm only gonna be doing it with one because I'm only moving one. Now that you figure what kind of insurance you wanna run, what kind of trailer do you wanna run, right? Like I said, 43 foot Kaufman. It is the rated at 17,000. It's a tri-axle. It's a really good trailer. It's perfect for what I need, right? It's got flip outs down here so I can make it 46 feet in length. And I keep hearing this talk. Oh, how long can you be for non-CDL? And I'm here to tell you, CDL and non-CDL have nothing at all to do with your length. Have nothing to do with it. You have a bed on that pickup truck? You're limited to 65 feet in most areas. Florida, I think it was 70 feet. Indiana, 60 feet. You take the bed off the truck and you register as a tractor. You can do that for being a non-CDL. Do I recommend being a non-CDL? No, I don't. Get IFTA, get your apportion tags, get all that shit. Run it correctly. I'm working on it. You don't have to start perfect. You don't have to start with a CDL, but I definitely recommend getting one. Your insurance costs will come down. But now that you've decided, okay, you figured out which trailer you want, now you gotta figure out your coupling system. I personally like a fifth wheel. You know why? Because I'm not gonna have to touch this thing right here. I'm not gonna have to worry about lining that thing up right there. I can just back up under it, and it's gonna pick the trailer up, and then I'm gonna hit that right, I'm gonna put my air up, and I'm gonna hit that right there, and it's gonna drop. And there you go, I'm gonna be able to take off. Gooseneck ball, imagine trying to line up a gooseneck ball down in there with all that stuff in the way. So, that's why I run a fifth wheel. I'm gonna get backed up under it right now, and we'll go from there. I'm doing this stop start BS so that I can show you guys. I wanna get it like lined up like exactly perfect. And you guys can see, it slides right through. It might seem like it's a little lower, but I'm gonna get it really close. And unfortunately, if you have a loop plate, you know, sometimes you break the centers. So what I gotta do is I gotta get just close enough to put this on there and then I can back the rest of the way. All right, so now that you got your fifth wheel coupled, next thing I'm gonna do, see how the landing gear's down? I'm gonna put some air in the bags. I need like 50 pounds or something. I do need to go through, I'm gonna inflate every tire because they are all low. Put them all up to 75 and we'll go from there. So we've got this nice air compressor here. I know I could get an electric one and just, you know, have it automatically hooked up and just go, but oh well, see ya. Throw 50 pounds in the bags. A vet's light, so we're not gonna have to put any more in it, really. See, still haven't touched the landing gear. I just put 50 pounds in it. Boom, done. Simple as that. Gears are kind of shattered, but you know, whatever. All right, now for the shit nobody talks about. Filling your tires up. This is why I run a pickup, because everything's easy to service as opposed to a semi. It's just my personal preference. I can fill every one of these tires up with this little air compressor right here. If I need to fill the trailer tires, I can take this up there and fill those tires up. Not a big deal. So that's why I run a pickup. All right, so I got the fronts up to 75. Uh, can't get the back um, TPMS off. I'm gonna have to take these covers off just to get to it. And I'm already running late, so I'm not worried about it. We got our pin in and I got my uh, breakaway. So let's get going. All right, so now what do you mean you need to run a logbook? I'm gonna go over this with you guys. I know I've gone over it in the past, but nobody seems to watch old videos and you know figure it out. So I'm gonna mention this in a current video. Basically, you have 14 hours that you are allowed to run in a day, okay? You have a 14 hour window. Once you start that clock, your 14 hour starts ticking. 
in that 14 hour time frame, you have 11 hours of drive time. Now, you always wanna start your 14 hours with a pre-trip, that's how it works. You have to start on duty. If you go right to driving, you will get a violation. You have to start a pre-trip on duty, 15, 20 minutes every single morning. So there goes 20 minutes of your shift every day. You have 11 hours of drive. Now you can't do that 11 hours straight. You have you have eight hours that you can run straight and then you have to take a 30 minute break. You are required to take a 30 minute break at or before any eight hour period of constant driving. And that can be an on duty or off duty break. If you wanna get out and go get fuel, that still counts. Still counts as a break. That's basically what it is. There's your log book. Same rules apply as a semi. Now, how do you know if you need your CDL or not? I explained this in previous videos as well. You need a CDL, a class A CDL, if your combination weight rating of the truck and the trailer are over 26,000 pounds. And I get a lot of confusion here because people will be like, oh, I need to register at 25,999. No, you don't. 26,000 is non-CDL. 26,001 is CDL. So basically my truck has a 9,000 pound GVWR and my trailer has a 17,000 pound GVWR. That's 26,000 GVW, gross combined weight rating. So I am non-CDL. Out of 50 states, only one of them requires you to get a class A CDL over 10,000 pounds. If you are in any other state besides California, as long as you are under 26,000 pounds, you do not need a CDL. And if you're over 26,000 pounds on a combination, your trailer cannot be over 10,000 pounds. So if you are 26,000, basically class A CDL makes you, if you're over 26,000 pounds, inclusive to a 10,001 pound or more trailer, you need a class A CDL. Not or, it's and, it's inclusive. So that's how you know if you need a CDL or not. That's not how much your truck weighs. My truck and trailer weigh 15,000 empty. You have a 26,000 pound rating. That means I have a capacity of 11,000 pounds. Just throwing out some rough numbers there. So it goes, your rating minus your actual weight is how much weight you can have on your trailer. And then you gotta go through your axle ratings and make sure each individual axle is underweight. So that's basically there. So do you need a CDL? More than likely, yeah. Unless you've derated the trailer, more than likely you need a CDL. through all that bull and you're like okay you know all well and good you know I got everything I spent the money I got a savings account which I highly recommend having at least three months worth of expenses or ten thousand dollars in your savings account whichever is greater and now now where do you get work where do you where do you get these jobs from do people are people gonna call you is like what do you do all right no nine times out of ten you're gonna lease under a company if you have no knowledge and you go and start a company you crazy you brave but most of the time it's not gonna work out if you're the one percent that succeed great but most of the time you're gonna lease under a company because that's just what most people do and you're gonna get your work if you're doing cars you're gonna be using central dispatch central dispatch is a website that I use that's where I get all of my loads now you will have direct customers the direct customers pay a lot more Listen to this. <laughs> Love it, distraction every time. But you will have direct customers, they will be willing to pay a little bit more to, because they know you're gonna give them a better service than going through a broker, and how long is it gonna take for my car to get shipped and this and that. Generally, if I'm picking your car up, you're gonna get it within two days. That's just how it is. If you go through and post your car on Central Dispatch, most of these people are gonna be waiting a couple weeks for their cars, and they know that, so they wanna deal with somebody directly. So when you get something from Central Dispatch and you're just a hot shot or a guy with a pickup truck and a trailer, you can generally provide that better service because you don't have 10 cars on your trailer. You can get them that car within two days if you're driving from PA to Florida. So get yourself some direct customers. The ones that pay good on Central Dispatch, those are the ones I talk to and try to get direct freight or direct customers from. But yes, you're gonna get the majority of your work to start out from Central Dispatch until you build up a clientele. 
All right, this is the problem with these low cars. You gotta be really, really careful with them. Stuff like this. Just like I said, this is just a local one. He's gonna go grab some boards, but just had a broker call me a direct. So we'll be setting one up for Thursday, hopefully, if it goes out good. He paid a good rate on the way down, so I wanna see if I can't get a good rate going up 1,250 miles for a Scottsdale Chevy. So hopefully they pay pretty good. This thing's running terribly, so it's going to the dealership. But let's get it up there. Now with these low cars, you wanna get back here. This is the shitty part to low cars. You gotta make sure the back's not gonna scrape and you gotta make sure you're not gonna scrape this lip. Now he said he is taking this off, but even still you don't wanna like, his driveway does things like this, so you don't wanna damage it. But it looks like we'll be able to clear the rest of the way. See these things have these lips down here too you gotta watch out for, but like I said, he's taking this all off. All this previous damage was from his driveway, so this is what he said. But we're clear at this point, we can just take it all the way off. There she is all loaded. This is basically what you gotta do. So you wanna get these as close as possible, but sometimes you can't because of the bars and then come over here. So this thing is very wide. All right, so here's the thing. All right, so we got right here. This is the things people don't talk about. It's trying to back up and get out of areas like this. So basically I have to back in. <laughs> going to want to learn how to back up a trailer. Oh yeah. Here we go. Now in all these cars, you're going to want to put it in park and put the e-brake on. Anybody that tells you to put it in neutral, people are crazy. Don't do that. Put it in park. You don't want a car rolling off your trailer because of broken straps. So you guys see it look at that i'm not touching the landing gear we did just get that one dropped off so we grab some keys just got that dropped off we're good i didn't really need to show any points uh dropping it off they were bugging us to get out of the way anyway but you guys can see get her dropped the number four hole or number five hole seems to be the one that does it so I'm able to just get it on that, as long as I can get the truck up high enough to get it on that hole, that's my spot. So all I do is, you know, stick the key in there and boom, there we go. Now it's down, chalk the wheels, get this thing dropped. it you know leave drop down in the comments what you guys think uh you know what people should be adding to this what bullshit do you have to deal with you know what what kind of what did you have to go through when you got your authority or lease under a company you know to, to do cars and just that's basically the whole principle of this video right how do you get into car hauling why do you want to be a car hauler should you do a car hauler just that's basically all of it so like i said drop some comments down below give some advice to the new guys I could probably use it as well, but other than that, I'm gonna head home. I gotta go to the bank and then I'm heading home. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's have some fun pulling out here. Open, yeah.